Hey guys, in today's lesson we're going to check out a classic tune called Have You Ever Seen the Rain by Credence Clearwater. So we're going to do this on, oh yes, the baritone uke. So get ready, we're going to check out the chords, the strumming pattern, and I've even got a little riff for you to learn as well. Get tuned up and let's get to it. So to demonstrate the strumming pattern here, I'm just going to use the open strings. So again, I want to be in good position to do this here. I've got my strumming hand over the sound hole. And when I strum, I kind of want to have my fingers below the strings when I start because the first part of the pattern is an up strum. So starting with your hand up here is going to feel a little awkward to move it down to do the up strum. So I start with my hand below the strings and then I'm just going to go up, down, up, mute. So let's just try that together nice and slow. If it helps you to say the pattern as you do it, try that as well. So here we go. I'll just count us in with a four count. One, two, three, four. Up, down, up, mute. Up, down, up, mute. Up, down, up, mute. Up, down, up, mute. Now, that's the most simplistic way to do it. If you want to try a little bit more of a technique here, you can do the mute with your fretting hand. So to do that, what you do is you actually cover the strings by touching it. Now I have an entire video on muting and chucking. I'll leave a link in the description for that to go further in depth. But in case you want to try this, to mute the strings with your fretting hand, you just touch the strings. And when you do that strum, you just get this deadened sound. So if I were to do that, with the left hand technique, or the fretting hand rather, I would go up, down, up, mute. Up, down, up, mute. Up, down, up, mute. So there's a little bit more of a timing thing that has to happen for you to incorporate the mute with your fretting hand, but I'll give you the option of trying either one. I'll probably do a combination of them both in the play along later in this video. So that's the strumming pattern you need. Now let's check out the chords. Well, the good news is about this song, there are only four chords to learn. So I'm gonna start with the easiest one first, and that is the G major chord. So the G major chord, I play with my ring finger here on the third fret on the E string, and that would sound like this. The next easiest chord is the C major chord. So to play C major, put my middle finger here on the D string second fret, my index on the B string on the first fret, and that'll sound like this. Nice warm major sound. From there, I'm going to play an A minor chord. Well, the good news is you are already in position to play A minor while you're playing the C chord here. So you're just gonna keep your C chord in place and then take your ring finger and add it to the G string on the second fret, and when you do that, this chord now becomes an A minor chord. So you hear that change from C, that major sound, to A minor here. Well, just adding one note, pretty cool. And then finally, we have an F chord. Now, if you don't like bar chords, maybe this won't be your favorite, but I encourage you to try it because this chord's gonna come up very often for you as you're learning this instrument. So the F chord is played by taking your index finger and barring the bottom two strings here on the first fret. I also want to mention that you want to put your thumb right behind your index finger on the back of the neck, and that's going to help you pinch those two strings down. You also want to make sure you're keeping this index finger super flat as you do this so that both of these notes ring through clearly. Now, in addition, we're going to add our middle finger here to the G string on the second fret, and my ring finger to the D string on the third fret. And these fingers need to be very upright when you play them. So you have a flat finger, and then your other two fingers are really up on your fingertips. And then I encourage you to pluck all of the strings when you learn this chord, and make sure that all of the notes are coming through nicely. Sometimes when you strum them, you'll disguise one of the notes that maybe isn't coming through so clean. So make sure you do that. With all of the new chords that you learn, make sure that all of the notes are singing out nicely as you play them. So we have the strumming pattern and we have the four chords that we need for the song. 
Now let's get going section by section and learn this tune. All right, let's dive into the intro. So the intro has three chords, and that chord progression will be A minor. That'll be played twice through the strumming pattern. F, which will be played twice through the strumming pattern. And then we move to a C, which will be played eight times through the strumming pattern. Now, if you remember, I mentioned a little term called riff earlier in the video. Well, instead of playing the C chord eight times, you can actually play the C chord two times and then play the riff, play the chord another two times, and then play the riff. And I will demonstrate that so you can kind of see as we do the play along together. But just know there that there will be a tab with a little riff that I'll show you how to play as well. So going through this intro here, we're gonna use the strumming pattern. Again, up, down, up, clap. And I'm just gonna do the simplified version here where I'm actually muting with my strumming hand. So let's just check out the intro one time through, and then I'll show you how to do it with the riff involved as well. So with a four count in, one, two, three, four, up, down, up, up, down, up, then F. C, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, yes, it might be a little redundant playing that C eight times. So this is where I encourage you to kind of push yourself a little bit and maybe try this simple riff and plant it in there. So if you've heard the recording of this song, you probably heard the bum 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 ba dum, which is kind of the signature riff that happens throughout the song. Well, let me show you how to play that riff now. I'm gonna use my thumb here on my strumming hand, and I'm gonna go over here to the B string on the first fret. So let me just demonstrate the riff would sound like this. So in order to do that, I play the first fret, and you can follow along on the tab below, but I'm just going to kind of talk you through it here. So I pluck the B string holding the first fret, and then I release my finger from that and I play that open. I move my middle finger here to the G string on the second fret, and I'm going to play that twice. So we have And then finally we end with an open G string. So the full riff is. So when I say play the riff in the intro section, that's what you would put in there. So let me just demonstrate that. I'm just gonna play the end of the intro here with the C chord and the riff together nice and slow just so you can see it being put together. So here we go. I'll do C twice, then the riff, C twice again, then the riff. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Riff. Strum. Riff. So this is something where you're gonna be changing techniques from going from a strum to just using your thumb to pluck the single strings. So when I do that, something that's helpful for me is I like to kind of grab underneath the base of the baritone here so that it stabilizes my hand when I'm going to play those single notes. So if that helps you, you can give it a try. You might have your own way of doing it and that's okay too. So that is the intro section. Now let's take a look at the verse. So lucky for you, you only need two chords to play the verse and that's the C chord and the G chord. So get familiar with switching between these two chords. It's always good to kind of take a look at the whole section of music that you're going to play and familiarize yourself with those chord transitions. Well, in this case, you're gonna be moving from C, which is played like this, to your G chord, which is played like this. Now, when you do that, I would suggest that you really try to keep your fingers close to the fretboard. You don't wanna have these extra fingers kind of 
flailing away from the fretboard, you want to keep them nice and rounded and close here so that you have the path of least resistance going between those two chords. When you move to your G chord, your ring finger is nice and close. Because there's only two chords, we're just gonna kinda play this one together here. So I'll count us in, and we're gonna play through the verse section, basically just going back and forth between C and G. Take a deep breath, smile, you're playing uke. Have some fun with this one, and let's dive into the verse. Here we go. One, two, three, four. the G. Two, three, four, back to C. Two, three, four. So if you can play that chord switch, you can play the verse for Have You Ever Seen the Rain. Now let's take a look at the chorus. So for the chorus section, the first set of chords that you want to get familiar with is moving between your F chord your G chord, and your C chord, because that's going to happen on every line of the chorus. So what I would suggest before you start trying to put this together and strumming it, is spend a little time with your fretting hand just working between those chords. So sometimes it's helpful for me just to kind of play these chords with a single strum and a four count, just so I'm able to kind of map them out before I add the strum into the equation. So let's just do that together nice and slow really quick here because we are using a bar chord now and for some of us that's challenging and that's normal. So let's just try to do that a few times so that you have a little bit of a map here as we go into the chorus. So we'll start on our F chord and we'll go F, G, C, A minor at the end there to just with a single strum. So here we go. Two, three, four. F, two, three, four. G, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. A minor, two, three, four. Now, if you need to do that a few times, that's totally up to you. And I would suggest you do that. The more repetitions you have with a chord transition, the more comfortable you're going to be when you actually try to add the strum into it, which is what we're going to do right now. So let's play through this chorus together in its entirety. We're just going to do it nice and slow so you have a chance to really get familiar with these chords. So starting on our F chord, I'll count us in with a four count. One, two, three, four. To the G. A minor, back to F, then G, then C, A minor, last line here, to the G, and then it ends on C. So that is the chorus section, the verse section, and the intro. And those are all of the sections in the song. All right, so let's play through the intro, verse, and chorus nice and slow. I'll just kind of talk us through it as we're going, but you can always follow along below on those chord diagrams. So here we go, starting on the A minor. I'm not gonna play the riff, I'm just gonna play the C chord eight times here in the intro. So one, two, three, four. Going back 
to the sea. Two, three, four, stay on the C chord. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, move to the G. One, two, three, four, back to C. To the chorus, go to F. One, two, G, two, C, two, A minor, two, again, back to the F. Two, G, two, C, two, A minor, and two, last one. All right, so let's put this together now with the lyrics a little closer to the song tempo. Again, we're just gonna do the intro, verse, and chorus, but this will have a little bit more of a uh, faster tempo to it. So here we go, starting with the intro. One, two, three, four. Have You Ever Seen the Rain by CCR is a great tune to add to your baritone repertoire. And I'm going to be adding more songs on a consistent basis for the baritone. And I'll have those available here on the All For Uke YouTube channel as well as allforuke.com. If you would like a song sheet with the chord diagrams and everything laid out for you in one place, you can download that at allforuke.com as well as several other songs for the baritone. And if you don't have a baritone, I have lots of songs for the tenor, soprano, and concert uke as well. If you're not subscribed to the channel here, please do so if you want to find out when the next video is coming out. Click that little alert bell and let me know what you think of this video. Leave your comments below. I love hearing from you guys. Where are you playing your uke around the world? I know that 2020 has been an interesting year. Maybe you've just come into the instrument and you're playing somewhere around the world. Well, I'd love to know where that is. My name's Kevin. Thanks so much for learning with me here today, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.